was on this exact spot in February 1306 that a meeting between two men shaped the future of Scotland. Those two men were Robert the Bruce and James Douglas. And it was a meeting that's been depicted recently in the film Outlaw King. My Lord, I'm James, son of William Douglas of Douglasdale. I want my name back. I want we fortunate. You can bring up the rear. After their meeting here, Bruce and Douglas went on to rebel against Edward I's occupation of Scotland. And ultimately they gained Scotland back as independence. But today, I want to go in the footsteps, not of the Bruce, but of James Douglas. The man known as Scotland's fiercest ever warrior. The man of England's nightmares. And I want to look at the places depicted in the film Outlaw King, featuring Douglas. Were they real? Of course they were. Let's go and see the real places. One of the greatest scenes in the Outlaw King movie is when Robert the Bruce allows Douglas to go and take his own lands back in Douglas. And he comes to the church and slaughters all the Englishmen. Well, this, this is the exact church where it happens here. St. Brides and Douglas. And some of the ancient church still survives. There are like modern appendages to the church, but. There's been a church on this site since long before Douglas's time and you can still see remnants of the ancient church here. And you can just imagine Douglas and his men hiding in the shadows outside this church that day and then furrowing in behind the English garrison and murdering them all inside the church. I think religion might have been very low on Douglas's list of life priorities. He might be what we would call a pragmatist. But St Bride's Church here in Douglas is not only famous as the scene of one of Douglas's great victories, it's also the place where Douglas is buried. So I'm going to try and get the key today and see if we can't get into the tomb. This is a pilgrimage that all Scottish people should make. I've got the key to the Black Douglas's tomb. the sacred place of Scotland's finest ever hero. You know, films like The Outlaw King bring this guy to life. But this is real. This is his real tomb, his real grave. I actually feel privileged to be here. Douglas' 
as lands entered this church on a fateful day one Palm Sunday in the 1300s. They were closely followed by Douglas and a few of his men in disguise. And then they were all brutally, with no mercy, slain in the church. Douglas proceeded to take his lands back and it was the beginning, the beginning of the rebellion and the beginning of Scotland defeating England and taking back the country and what was rightfully theirs and it was all down to this man. It ain't fiction, it ain't fantasy and it happened here on this site, somewhere in the grounds of this church, St Bride's Church in Douglas. This place is soaked with so much history. You don't know which way to look. this effigy is kind of falling to pieces. It's a shame. You know, our country's adjourned with statues of men that nobody knows who they are or what they've done, but they've been rich. And Douglas is this. Perhaps it's more fitting to the modest man that he was. But as you know from the film, the massacre at the church wasn't the end of it because Douglas went back to his castle and took out the English there as well. So let's go and see if anything remains of the castle today. Of course the outlaw king wasn't the first dramatisation of the Palm Sunday incident in Douglas because Sir Walter Scott wrote about it as well back in the 1800s. And Walter Scott's version wasn't called the Outlaw King, it was called Castle Dangerous. And Castle Dangerous was Castle Douglas, where we're going now. And I can see the castle on the horizon. Welcome to Castle Dangerous. So here we are, Castle Dangerous. Douglas came back here after taking out the English at the church and then proceeded to take out all the English here as well. Stole all their food and threw the dead bodies into the well to poison the water source and then the castle was destroyed so the English couldn't use it again. Now the remnants of the castle that you see here at Castle Dangerous are of a far later construction than what would have been here at the time in the Black Douglas. This was in fact the remains of a kind of 18th century mansion, but it was built on the site of Castle Dangerous. It would have been here at the time of James Douglas. You can see the remnants of even older buildings underneath there. The yeah, likes of these bricks here are of a far older construction than the castle at the top. But the Castle Dangerous incident, as depicted in the film and the Sir Walter Scott novel, was merely the first, the first of hundreds of attacks led by Douglas against the English. And what I want to do now is go and have a look. A look at some of the ones that maybe weren't depicted in the film. And should have been if the film had been about 10 hours long. After the Battle of Bannockburn, James Douglas took up residence in the Scottish borders, the land that was then the Ettrick Forest, 
From there at his base in Lintalee near Jedburgh, he repelled any English invasions. But he also made incursions into England. And this year, the former Scottish town of Berwick upon Tweed had been in English hands since 1296. And there was a real jewel in the crown of both Scotland and England. The great walled town of Berwick upon Tweed was the only Scottish town still in English hands, and Bruce wanted it back. In January of 1316, a first attempt was made to take Berwick back, but the English garrison there were alerted to Bruce's attack, led by Douglas, and they came by sea, but the attack was unsuccessful. But it was the beginning, the beginning of the end for Berwick. Berwick had been in English hands since 1296 when Edward I Longshanks had sacked the place and murdered most of the inhabitants. But there was a bit of a personal vendetta here for James Douglas because his father was led away from Berwick on that day in chains to the Tower of London by Longshanks and executed. Douglas never seen him again. I think Douglas must have seen the taking of Berwick upon Tweed as some kind of personal justice for the death of his father as well. The Scots began to put a bit of a stranglehold on Berwick. They couldn't infiltrate the town, but they began to issue sanctions, making sure food supplies didn't get through in the lakes, and the soldiers within Berwick began to rebel a bit. In the spring of 1316, the English posted one of their strongest and most battle-hardened lieutenants to be the governor of Berwick upon Tweed. That was Sir Robert Neville. He had heard Douglas's fearsome reputation and he wanted to challenge that. So that's exactly what Neville did. He challenged Douglas to one-on-one -on -one combat. Of course, word got over the borders. And Douglas found out, never a man to shy away from that kind of combat, he accepted. Douglas and his small army of Scotsmen rode up to the walls of berwick upon tweed here and unfurled the Douglas banner. So Neville rode out to meet them with a force which was far superior in numbers, thinking that Douglas would flee. He was messing with the wrong man. You fight! Fighting broke out between the two forces, just outside Berwick Walls here. And in the middle of the melee, Douglas and Neville met on one-on-one -on -one combat. The result, I'm afraid, was a foregone conclusion. Neville was slain. The town of Berwick was now almost on its knees. What you see just here are the remains of old Berwick Castle, the old Scottish castle 
and the walls. These are really the only masonry part of the old walls of Berwick that survive. And it was these that Douglas had to get over to take Berwick once and for all. Even though most of Berwick Castle and the walls in this area were destroyed in the Victorian era to make way for Berwick Railway Station. The part that survives is still pretty bloody impressive. In 1318, Robert the Bruce had made an ally within the walls of Berwick Castle. He was going to help Bruce's army over the walls to retake the town. And Bruce needed one man to lead the assault. There was only one man for the job, the Black Douglas. And on the 1st of April, 1318, they began the assault over this massive fortification. <laughs> Once they scaled the walls, Douglas and his men entered the town hoping for a peaceful takeover, a bloodless coup. That wasn't happening. The English put up resistance, and the Scottish soldiers, led by Douglas, had to, had to save them. Finally, the time of Bork was back under Scottish control after almost 20 years. And now, the whole of Scotland was under Scottish control.